bit of a different day today. Snowing. Wow. Lots of snow. Look at it. Covered. Absolutely covered. Minus six in Cinderford. Crazy. Beautiful though. <laughs> Super Pro 100 volt high speed going out on charge first thing this morning. Coming with a free mud guard, so they've been pretty popular recently. We put them on sale and throw a free mud guard in, and everyone wants them. Can you get some milk, please, man? Because wherever you know, last time you stitched me up, you said about the milk. We have now run out. Oh, okay. It's a little joke that Mario did last week where I gave him tenner, bought my food sweet then came back with like 400 packets of biscuits and then later on the day went how's the milk going <laughs> or something like that and we're like what do you mean i went to the fridge and it was really low i was like you get <laughs> claims it wasn't intentional it's now run out though it has actually run out now yeah so yeah thanks how's that getting on all fixed uh nearly is it no <laughs> Brilliant conversation. so it is two minutes to 12 just finishing answering customer emails Really, and now, really bad influence. So, just double checking the work that Mario's done on the uh, weekly blog, vlog, blog, um, and this will be coming to you very, very shortly if it's all a okay. It's Monday and it's supposed to be released today, so it's midday. So, I'll quickly review that. I've had a bit of a gap in between answering emails and other stuff like that. Party service should have been there ages ago. Uh, yeah, um, we get the email on a, on a Friday afternoon, of course we come back. Talking about their FedEx shipping, so if you watched last week's episode, talking about the fact that stuff goes missing and it makes us look really bad, even though we've actually done the job we're supposed to do and the courier hasn't. Anyway, this was shipped, I think, December the 21st. We are now January the 25th. January 25th, got an email today. <clears throat> we've shipped out. As another replacement set of pads for this customer that I'm talking about. Got an email today saying, oh, sorry about that. It wasn't scanned. It was lost in the system. We now found it and we're forwarding it onto the customer. So they're going to get the original set and the replacement set. Meanwhile, old matey boy here can't feed his children. We actually have in like an internal messaging system. So if Mike's out in the warehouse and I'm in here, he can actually forward across documents and things like that. So he's just pinged me a message now saying, can you pay this one? It's a supplier invoice uh, for 4,737 US dollars that needs to be sent across. And then within that, we create a uh, transfer up essentially, which is um, we basically get a notification of goods inbound. And out of that, once they finally arrive, we book them in. And what that means is in the interim, anyone that phones up with a query, Anyone else who hasn't been involved in grabbing those products and bringing them in can actually see that certain products, a set amount of products on that transfer are inbound and they can click on it and see how many, the quantity, etc. So if a customer wants five of something um, or a single unit, you can see how many are coming in and the ETA. And so I'm the man that has to pay the money. And so it makes you sweat a little bit. So I'm just going to go and pay that now. It's in an international currency as well, USD. So we need to do the conversion. And then we have to document the conversion as well because it fluctuates all the time. So the actual price of goods and uh, our, our margins, if they're very tight, to be really careful if it's a really poor exchange rate. Sometimes if they inflate the price back up again to counteract it. So some of our prices can, can fluctuate up and down depending um, where the strength of the pound lies at that point in time. But it's all those things I have to monitor in the background. So I'm gonna go and pay this money over. <laughs> so what we're actually doing with this side of things is we're actually putting up a, um, a new logo for Modern Combat Sports. And uh, some people don't like being on camera. It's not what they signed up for. Mike is, uh, was nominated to be the model. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. The guy we've had to do some artwork before, brilliant guy. Um, just cracking logos. In fact, if you want to check out what piece of his work, electricpeople.org, he did the logo for that. So we're getting a logo made up for MCFs, Modern Combat Sports, and within that, um, we're going to use it on the packing tape, we're going to use it on the website, we're going to use it on t-shirts and stuff that we have printed up pretty much everywhere. Um, and so he just needed a basic outline of our requirement, and that was just a little insight into a photo shoot that we had earlier.
PUC stand. Good choice. All wrapped up. In you go. RS clip on mug guard. Two free stickers. KS18 XL light unit, two of them, and a speaker unit. And that one is actually a collection, so we leave it at the front because we're not actually open for collections. So we leave it at the front. Phil, you're collecting that, in fact, very soon. So these are the Super Boost pads someone's ordered. Just on the back, already, you can see it in there, already fitted. Super Boost pads, two free stickers, boom, done. Label. You're gonna love these, Daryl. A Zocca XL. Good choice. Good choice. Put some of these in there. Little freebies. Two balaclavas. Baklava? No, balaclava. I love balaclava. Really good these, especially in winter. Keep your face warm. Yep. Right, Try this to be free t shirt. Good choice. Speedy feet hoodie. And an electric people sticker. Good choice. With the light on, it's quite reflective. One, two, three. Oh, I need to get a standing knife and cut that open. The Rhino Shine is the stuff for after you've washed it. If you want some of the other stuff to clean, the Action Cleaner, you want the Rhino Goo Fast Action Cleaner. Use that all the time. It's like super bright, luminous. Rhino Shine. Need one of them as well to go with the kit. Free stickers. Got a customer email. Um, it's funny, isn't it, how these things work out. Very often when we get a part in to uh, repair, replace or whatever for a customer, you tend to get an email in just before it arrives and they're unconnected. It's just the way these coincidences happen sometimes. Just emailed in saying, I, I tried to fix it. The part's broken. What do we do? What about warranty and stuff? I've just had the replacements arrive. So it's, it's always actually quite good to be able to then reply and say, we've got it. It's sorted. You're going to be sorted. Don't worry. And then it, it helps people feel a bit happier about the situation. So uh, also another question, which is why are the price of the wheels dropped drastically? Um, they actually haven't. If you're viewing our website, you may be looking at the X of that price. Um, so now buy IP address, depending on where you're based, and you, if you're hiding your IP in some way, you're masking it, it may just show you the X VAT price. Still, in the UK, Brexit's confused things slightly, but basically, uh, we've got the X VAT price anywhere else now outside the UK will pay, pay the X VAT price. Um, and if you're in the UK, you'll pay the X VAT plus the 20%. It does display both if you're in the UK, unless you're hiding or in incognito mode or something like that. Replacement parts in. Done. Good to go, customer. Mario's off. Yep. Half day, was it? No. Full uh, day. Uh, what's time? Five. Yeah, four minutes past five. Yeah. 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 See you later. Yeah, see you, bye. Yeah. Don't miss your bus, will you? Yeah, no. I'll, I'll lock the door after you. Uh, I need to go the other way. You need to go so, the other way? So that would help me. I'll turn the lights off. Yeah, thank you. Have you got a key for that door? No. Well, when you're going through, you haven't got a key? Well, you, you open the lock. Oh my goodness, that is, oh, this is typical. You, you, you sit? Yeah, the other door. Yeah, this can... is, this is typical. This is what happens at give an inch, take a yard. Well, you, give an inch, take a yard, Mario. You, you said you're going to lock it after me, so yeah. I'm just using this opportunity. Brilliant. Oh, he's off on his old King Song Kersey Sness. He's out. Yeah. Love you, Mario. <laughs> oh, 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 you always said it! <laughs> I love you, Ian. There you are. Yeah. I'll even hold the door for you. Yeah, I'm good with that. Thank you. See you. Yeah, bye. Careful in the snow. Can't see it because no. it's 
it's, there's a window in the way. Yeah. Bye. Bye bye. Speedy V logo sticker. See ya. See ya. Bon voyage. It's gonna be really icy, so go careful, won't you? Yeah, I know. As he come. Almost, almost had a fall this morning. At least you got your Carly helmet on. Yeah. It's invisible that Carly helmet. This is a Mario trick. I only get to see that when he's uh, as in the videos. I get the sneaky peeky, you know, when he should actually be doing some work. He's actually um, messing about with his weights here. So, yeah, I'm just doing a few just to get the old muscles working, isn't it? Question is, how's he going to be getting on with the old V11? Oh, there she is. I think now it works. He's probably already blogged it. Look at that, perfect. I'm just gonna do a quick newsletter. Don't get round to doing them very often. Probably should do more to let everyone know about this weekly vlog. Um, Cause some people won't know. Some people aren't subscribed. Very few people who are subscribed haven't hit the bell notification. So don't get notified. Um, it's a common problem across YouTube. It's people who are subscribed haven't hit the bell notification. So hit it if you haven't already. Um, so I'm gonna do a quick mail shot and let people know that we're doing this series because quite a lot of work goes into it to give a behind the scenes view. So I'm just gonna set that up now in a template and forward that out to people. Well, that's pretty much edited up. Just sent a test email to myself and uh, there it is. Beat V log, you'll be receiving this newsletter if you signed up for our newsletters. And of course the live show's back as well. So get on it. Uh, that's the email going out in the next 20, 30 minutes-ish. Well, just had a question asked by a customer, actually, also on the YouTube comments. So a viewer and a customer, which is quite common around here, um, of what tire comes with the KS16X? So I'm going into our overstock area of the 16Xs and I'm gonna punch one open and have another look what tire comes with it right now, because these are a fresh batch. This is gonna be really awkward to get out. But I need to know for myself as well. 16 by 3.0, we know that already. It's tube type, it's nylon, but it hasn't got a brand on it. It has not got a brand. Well, if you ever want to know, that's the tread on them. Cannot answer the question though. No brand name on it. It is now 25 past six. I really do need to get home. Got young kids at home. I'm just gonna have to stop what I'm doing now and just get on and, and leave. Otherwise I'll be here for ages answering questions, emails, um, updating the website, any number of things. Um, so yeah, I am off. You have to call it quits sometimes, even when you're not completely finished, which of course adds it on to tomorrow's, but it's balancing that priority list to make sure you've actually got family and work balance somewhere near right which is pretty difficult when family relies on on this being legit and uh, running smoothly but hey ho off i go saves on the uh, heating anyway turn all the heaters off because it's freezing in here it was minus six on the way in this morning well that is mental for anyone Let's go. That is still uploading, 39%. It's taking an age. That's this, well, when you're watching this, this is episode three of the vlog. Uh, so it should be up today, because it's a Monday. Needs a service, three years old, well soon, in about a month's time. Trying to get the warranty working, only a couple of little niggles, um, before it expires. And it's due an MOT in a month's time, so I'm getting it done at the same time. Come on. 
Brucey. Come on, snow dog. The English countryside. It's lush. Love it. Absolutely love it. Birds, woodpeckers, which is a bird. <clears throat> yep. So what we're just investigating at the moment, I've had this set up for quite some time now, um, but this is the customer end of what they would see of a repair. So if you have a warranty repair, you get a ticket system brought in to our website. So it's in speedyfeet.co.uk. Um, we've got the technician side of the system, so it's a ticket system, where we do all the repairs, serial numbers and stuff like that. Customer facing, you guys will see it like this. So you can see the thing, we just this test, test thing we're doing. Booked in a case and any parts that are put in, they also appear there. So you can see all your information here and you get updated via email um, every single time. So we've got an email that's come through here saying there's been an update on your worksheet. And you can log in and see how we're doing with your return and stuff and where we're at. So that's pretty neat. Uh, keeps you in the loop 24 seven, doesn't it Mario? Yeah. Uh, very good. Yes. That's it. Good. Talk about returns. We've just got a package in with parts for repairing a wheel. So that's good. All the way from China. A mud guard, very kindly sent by Gotway for, well, be good, for the Monster Pro. So it's like a giant version of the RS mud guards. So that's that goes there in a second. The RS ones which we have a load in stock. It's basically the same as that with the Bigode logo, which is a GW, got way. Um, it's tiny, even though this is actually quite big. That shows you the proportions of the Monster Pro. Um, as you can see, significantly different. So that will tuck in there and stop that. So that's one thing. By the way, we haven't put this up for sale yet, but it is for sale. It's 500 pound off our retail. So if you want it, um, definitely email in. It's gonna look pristine because this is just mud from the 70 miles we've done on it. So yeah, it'll be pristine in a brand new box with the charger and also a mud guard, which I might go and try out and uh, clean it all up, get it polished up sale but it's only obviously only one of these so if you want to grab it it's worth it just for the batteries firing a quid off so future mario here sadly the videos that i recorded on monday um got corrupted so we have the files but they they don't seem to play and basically on mondays mostly i was i was dealing with a uh, v10 f just um swapping i think i swapped the board oh no that was uh, um so the customer had swapped the board uh but the wheel was working wasn't working properly so the issue was that the lift switch uh, the cable was pinched uh, as you uh, can see from uh, ian's footage of the close-up so mario stripped down the uh, v10 f that was in last week's episode to have a little look at the micro switch i think you can probably tell what the problem might be at some point it's come apart and be put back together and it's actually pinched the wires together and exposed them. So it's not the micro switch, it's it being pinched, essentially. Look at that. So we just need to repair that up and it should work. And so I fixed that and then the wheel was working fine. And actually we then shipped the wheel to the customer. We got a replacement board in for a customer and it's the, it's the first one we've had in. It's an RS board. And actually, so for high torque, C38 is high torque, C30 is high speed. It's the first one we've ever had to replace. But not only that, um, actually the board's not failed. It was just that the lights on the front and back don't work. So it's just easy to replace the entire board. And it just solves all those sorts of problems. So the board's been replaced on that. That's actually going out to a customer. Um, so yeah, but again, that because we've never ever done them, never had them requested, uh, it's not even on the store. So comes in, we've got it, you take a photo of it, do the descriptions, weigh it, uh, work at cost price, etc. upload it, put it on the store, and uh, then create a customer uh, order for one, but obviously zero rated. That gets done, that then removes it from stock when we ship it out. Uh, as you would have seen over on Mario's machine a few moments ago, the ticket system we've got for warranty and repair work that we do, 
it keeps it fairly tight, fairly organized. We get a lot of stuff in. So that system enables us to keep track of things. And me and Mario have just been sorting over the last hour and a half, two hours, loads of different communications from multiple places regarding a single issue. And centralizing all that is incredibly difficult to keep a handle on. That ticket system allows you to kind of grapple with it as long as people are entering the data, copy and pasting messages that have happened, linking up to articles and things like that, um, images and screen grabs and all that's put in one place for one customer, then it's really simple. So for instance, this customer swapped out his uh, M Super Pro that he had. He decided that actually he'd like to swap that out for an RS, so he did. Uh, sent that back, we swapped out for an RS, he paid the difference in value. When we went to go and do the warranty work, we grabbed in the, uh, in the work ticket, we grabbed actually his MSP and said, oh, he needs a board for this. Thankfully, <laughs> that error doesn't matter too much because when we get the serial number for the wheel that we needed the replacement part for, Gotway already knew that that was the RS, not the MSP. So the parts just arrived. I'm thinking it was an MSP. When we double check, actually it isn't, it's for an RS. So that's all sorted. The ticket system, as a customer, customer facing, you will get an email notification into your inbox telling you here's a link to the dashboard and then you can keep up to date. The ticket system is the idea. Sure, it just makes it a little bit easier for you guys keeping track of stuff. We do do repairs. So if you've got a wheel and you haven't bought it from us, we take in wheels and we repair them and things like that. So just let us know. Sometimes the lead times it can be because we're super backed up or it can be because we need to wait for parts to come in. And sometimes it can be months. Um, but we will get you sorted eventually. So yeah, get in touch if you want to. Um, service at speedyfeet.co.uk for all service inquiries. Whoa, that's some product that was stuck in customs for a huge amount of time, finally in. Believe it or not, very high value in such a small box. And we've got some white paper, some more out there as well. There it is. Five rooms, three rooms, okay, four. I think it's five. Five lots of five. So much easier than a wheel. I figured out why the wheel was tilting backwards when I was riding it because in the settings it was set to maximum speed of 5 km per hour so if you go over that then it's gonna tilt you back so I changed that to 25 km per hour which is the I think the maximum setting I can set it on the V10F and that fixed the uh, the tilt back so I was able to ride around with, without a problem you know when someone parks in your space and they move Makes you look a right noob. There we are. Just looks like you parked right in the middle of the road. Makes you look like a right donut. It's not my fault. It's not my fault, everybody. Someone parked my space. So actually, in this very car, when I took my car in for service, one thing I didn't document was the fact that uh, Mike was following me in, so I got this car back because I haven't got time to go and pick it back up tonight. Um, actually, there's a little bit of warranty work that you need to do on it. So thankfully I had this car, but in the back was not only Will's son, um, but my laptop with a three pin power plug. And thankfully, not able to see it, but down here, I can plug in three pin plug. So we're able to connect to my mobile phone on a 4G network and have a Zoom call uh, with me and Mike involved and two other guys from the software integrating into um, all of the businesses. Um, and so yeah, we were able to carry on that and we sat in the McDonald's car park after going to the drive-thru. Four minutes late to the meeting because we went to the drive-thru, I had any breakfast. Uh, so we sat there and we were on that meeting for about an hour, an hour call, sat in a car park, it's pretty good. Talk about modern technology. So we didn't have to, the part of the problem was we didn't think we'd get back in time and indeed we wouldn't have done. So I brought the laptop and stuff with me. And so we sat here with chairs pulled right back. Um, I went through that meeting, got quite a lot of things ticked off the list um, to get, get that moving forward. And so, yeah, the three pin plug became useful yet again. We had it, we used it, we had the power cut um, and we used it with my laptop.
and now it's starting to rain. So we've had snow, we've had snow, and now we've got a week of rain forecast, which is not conducive for doing wheel reviews. I'm back working on the V11, and as you saw in the previous episode, uh, whoops, we don't really need this now. But anyway, you live and you learn. But now I will continue disassembling the V11. It's the Dyson 360i. Actually, it's two of them. Both are broken. So I'm gonna contact the well out of warranty. Probably had them two, no, probably three years now, I think. And guess what, they both broke at the same time. I'm quite deep into them now because I bought two extra brand new batteries, about 140 quid, something like that. And still not working, so it wasn't a battery issue. So I'm gonna have to get these sorted out because having a Husky, Produces, don't know if you can see it, but it produces a lot of hair. We've got the RS Torque that we haven't done a review on yet. Brand new, sat in there. There she is, ready to go for a review. Just haven't had a chance to do it. Uh, but we've got the Elite, which you saw last week's episode, I think, that we need to sort out, waiting for a key fob so we can activate it. And we've come across these beauties, which are in for service. So it's a C30. Um, Basically, both have got, um, the lights don't work, don't come on. So this one, and then we got another one. The lights don't come on. But they've independently, like massively months apart, just been sat here. Um, so we'll get them fixed up, and then they'll be on sale on the site. And then we've got, uh, what have we got here? Camera, what this one is. Oh, it's um, a high-speed um, super... Pro, I think. I think the memory. Um, again, lights. So they used to come with uh, this here, this lighting board, separated from the motherboard. Um, it used to cause issues in the, some of the models, but so we replace them out and don't have any issues since then. But the earlier, this is the new version of it, essentially for those models to retrospectively fit it to it. So it seems to solve that. Mario's going to get them round categorize them, put tickets in for them on our ticket system, and then these three can go into the workshop. Um, job done. Oh, and we've got a fourth over here with, guess what, no lights. So same again, need sorting for the lights side of it. This one though is brand new. So this was done on a QC. This one was caught out on QC. It's nothing, I mean, we're specifically looking at Gotway because we're sorting through the Gotway stuff at the moment, but it happens with all wheels, there's nothing, catastrophic with any real Pacific wheel. Um, but in this case, we're actually sorting through the Gotway stuff that needs repair, whether that's warranty customer return or brand new. There's only one, I think it was 30 units we had in of this C30 at the time. That needs sorting because no lights. So good job with QC, otherwise someone would receive that. It'd work fine, but they tried to put the lights on, it wouldn't work. Um, so you could ride it, nothing wrong with that, nothing dangerous about it, it's just that the light doesn't work. So what we got in here is the workshop, which we've got a bench, which a lot of tech stuff goes on with guns and stuff, full of parts, things like that, messy. And then we've got racks here with wheels. So we can fit one, two, three, four, five, six customers' wheels on that. And then what we've got here, one, two, three, four, five bottom shelves taken up with Jennies. But there is a wheel down there as well. Mm, um, it's is it from part, this oh, part of that one, is it? From my nemesis. From Mario's nemesis. The wheel he broke on the ride out suspiciously whilst he's on his own. The one I did a thousand and something kilometers on, and then said, Mario, would you like to ride? He said, Yeah. I did two. And he did two kilometers, and then it looks like that now. We need at least another four, probably need to get another one of these in here. So, what we're trying to do is explore ways of maximizing the space here to try and fit another racking unit in. Uh, of course, the obvious answer is to fix things and remove them from the shelf and then relocate other wheels back on there. But these are, as you can see, so we've got stuff here, monster. This was uh, my screw up because it was, we had a replacement board for it. Only because again, the decorative lights didn't work every now and again. So we replaced the board, but it was an old gen one board and I screwed up the wire and blew the new board. Totally my screw up that was, nice board there. So we're gonna try and re reorganize this, tidy it up a little bit, because it's getting more and more cramped. The busier we get, probably move this unit out here and these units out and put uh, some rack in there. Cause I got about two grand's worth of racking. Yeah. Sat in the showroom, don't know if you've seen it. We'd better use it. Yeah, better use it, because it's been sat there. So every now and again we nick them and build things like this, which is what I did with this one. How's it going, Mario? Uh, all right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I need more uh, experience with 
packing, packing the box. Yeah. Putting something in a box and putting some tape on it. Yeah. I'll see if there's a training course online. Let's go and check now. How to put something in a box and put tape on it. Oh, you can get a, a degree in it. Ah, good. Yeah. I need it. I'm just emailing some people uh, so I, we can have guests on the EUC live show. So that was going to be very exciting. So definitely be tuned in on Wednesdays so you can see the live show and see what kind of guests we're having on. Just come off the phone with the agent of the landlord for the shop. And one of the conditions I had is I didn't want to be tied into a too long a lease because obviously the longer the lease, the uh, higher risk, the more money you're putting down. And in this climate, you can't even open the shop to the public because it's locked down. And they're supposed to be locked down until March. So we're end of January now almost, but still they're talking about locking down till July, middle of July. So that's quite high risk. So there's been a bit of a negotiation going back and forth. I want a, a two or three year lease, but with a break clause of 12 months written into it. Um, and a quarter's rent up front, that's fine with me, but a max of 12 months, because you're talking a lot of money, even then committed to. But with a reduction on rent to 50%, for all the time we're by law not allowed to open. So it's 50% off the rent. So essentially we're, we're paying half of the rental cost. So we'll see how that goes, we'll just come off the phone, they're gonna go back to the landlords now. Um, hopefully the landlord's got the head screwed on and understand that not many people are picking up retail premises right now because of the climate. So if they understand that, if they say, no, 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 you've got to take a three year lease out, then let me, that shop could be off. Um, everything else is all thumbs up, good to go. Literally this final little hurdle to overcome. So we'll see how it goes, hopefully okay. Paul very kindly sent these stickers in that you saw in a previous episode, the first episode, I think, or maybe in the Monster Pro review. Um, they're gonna go on my Sherman pool, if you're wondering. They're not wasted, told you they wouldn't be. They sat there ready. I'm gonna clean this up uh, using some of the Rhino goo and the Rhino cleaner. Um, clean up the Rhino cleaner and then put some goo on it and it'll be lovely as new. And then uh, once it's dried out, I'm gonna put the stickers on. So it's gonna go on my old Sherman. This is a striking example of you know, keeping warehouse management. These are some light units for the back of the Gotway. Um, yeah, they have never been booked in, never counted in. Um, so they'll be on the site soon. That needs doing. So I've tied the desk, just cleaned it up. Pretty menial task, but it is now 20 to seven. So I'm gonna head off home. Just literally finished, spent about two minutes cleaning the desk. Gets cleaned about once every three months. Now smells of apple antibacterial multi-surface cleaner. It stinks. Uh, I'm off home now, so I'll catch you later. See you tomorrow. Another day. Skydio battery, Skydio remote. It's been sat at home for goodness knows how long. We've got quite a few things to plan. Um, Mary's gonna be a little bit busy with the old media because today, of course, is a Wednesday and it's the live show. Gonna try and bring on a guest each week, possibly, or however many offers we have for people who wanna come on. I think we've got three or four already lined up who've tipped their hat and said, I would like to be in the live show. It's gonna be a first time this week. We're gonna try and integrate that, get the audio all right, um, get them on screen as well as me there be able to answer questions at the same time and for them to be able to answer questions, etc. So that's gonna be a, a bit of a new format for this year, 2021. Also got a load of other filming and stuff to do. And of course, all the other normal stuff, normal stuff on top of that. So usually it's it's everything related around set of wheels, um, etc. There's a few orders to pull this morning, first thing. I'm gonna have a look at a couple of those and show you just a couple of them and show you what's shipping out this morning. Today is a media day, so my responsibilities are to set up the studio so we can have our live stream and also do some video editing of the uh, footage that we have so far. So at the moment, we've got a GoPro that Mario filmed on. 
and the footage from Monday, all his footage is corrupt, sadly. Uh, so we're just trying to find a way of recovering that footage. And we got the same we got loads of GoPros, and the usual tip is to pull the battery out and put it all back in again, the SD card and the battery. And it'll finalize each of the videos on there. That hasn't worked. We've tried it in another GoPro. That hasn't worked. Try to plug it direct SD card direct into the Mac, and that hasn't worked. So now we're gonna look at trying recovering the files. They're there, because they're big files, but Unfortunately, can't play them, which is a bit of a shame. If you want to be in the EUC Live show, please send us an email at info at samsung.media and, and also be prepared to have a three to five minute long video that we can play as an introduction uh, whilst we're setting up the, the Zoom call and then, then we can go live and you can have a chat with Ian and with the, with the viewers um, and so just make a more of an interesting content for, for everyone. First of all, cup of tea. Of course, with drones and stuff like that, um, especially in the winter time when you're not really using them as much, the environment where you can send a drone up and fly around is fairly limited. Um, you wouldn't know this from a marketing material when people sell drones like DJI and Skydio and stuff. It's always sunny California. For us, it's a lot more difficult. So maintaining batteries, you have to keep on top of that. So this has been charged back up again. They're smart batteries, so they deplete over time anyway. It's kind of compounded slightly because we do a lot of filming with the drones and with camera equipment in general, um, you have to make sure that you've got enough batteries. So if you're out on the field, you could just swap it out for another one. Of course, having lots of batteries means it's a lot more batteries to keep maintained. So this was actually been sat at home. So I've got some at work and some at home in case I've got the drone with me, I grab it and go out in a, in a bit of good weather in the forest. Then I've got this at home. Well, that's been neglected more than the ones at work. So now I'm bringing this, bringing this in, charging it up. This is actually a dual charger uh, for it, which would have by after I got the Skydio 2 to reorder in because it wasn't available at the time. Now it's got a pass through USB-C fitting. So you can then charge something off this as well. Um, but you can fit two batteries on it at once and it intelligently charges them and also outputs power. So that's pretty sweet. Okay, so this is a Skydio R1 bag. I thought I might as well talk on the drone. I might as well show you the drone. So this is the bag done by North Face um, that was sent to us actually for free because of troubles we had with the R1 originally. Um, and here in here is a three amp charger, which I had no idea was in there. <laughs> so that's good. I've got that back now. But I didn't know I was missing it. Don't know. That's one Skydio 2 lost. I'll find it at some point and show you. But of course, we got other stuff as well. So we've got the Mavic Air, which sits in a little pot like this. Um, and we've got the controller for it, the charger for it, we've got spare blades essentially. Um, so, yeah, then we've got spare cameras, speed gun, uh, that's a double charger. I think really nice packaging with the Skydio. A little bit of the Skydio stuff. We've got the live stream equipment, special bag to put it all in. You can go out on the road essentially with that. Um, the Ronin case. The, the other drone, and the DJI stuff, we no longer really use. This was brought out because, um, or when, should I say, we I, I was thinking of basically running uh, a, a drone, taking this with me, and then using it for 120 frames per second, so for slow motion stuff. Using it essentially as a camera on a tripod, obviously it, it flies, you don't need a tripod, but there's tripod mode on it. And I was going to use it for that, and I used it about once I think, and that was it. And then played about with it, and actually at some point it went down, and I had to repair it, crashed, and broke. Um, so I got a new arm for it, like the arm holds out and puts the rotors on. Uh, fixed it and it's been sat there since, but I have to keep on top of charging that as well. So we've got three batteries for that one. And so we do the live feed with these coming from the US. And we've got three of these, they're quite expensive bits of kit. We've got three of them, but of course, yet again, they're all run on batteries. So you have to make sure you keep on top of charging those as well. Especially when we got locked down and we didn't do a live feed for what, eight, nine months. So yeah. And then of course you've got the Canon C100s. This is not a genuine Canon battery. They're really, really expensive. Genuine Canon charger. Um, so we've got an aftermarket one and it's to keep on top of those chargers as well to make sure that's all good. And then in the gimbals, then you have batteries in the gimbals and then you have GoPros. There's a GoPro number two out of three uh, of the Hero 9s. That one needs to be kept on top of that gimbal there. You need to keep on top of the charging on that one. And you've got c 100 here, sat here, the other one's in the uh, studio. That's got a battery in it, which is a genuine Canon battery. 
that you need to keep on top of charge. Is it charged? Oh, it's only one digit. These, by the way, the reason it's so expensive and that these C100 Mark IIs are really, really good, this will run for about 10 hours. Just filming continuously. Awesome, absolutely awesome. And in there you've got, um, this is why these sort of cameras are so expensive. You've got the SD card slot, but you've got dual. So you can choose to record from one. When that runs out, you can record straight onto another, or you can record both at the same time in case one gets corrupted and you don't lose anything. Um, you've got HDMI out, proper HDMI, full HDMI out. You have the whole lot. And of course, you've got the extra. When you buy the camera, it doesn't come with a lens. It comes with just the body, doesn't come with the battery, and doesn't come with the top. <laughs> and you can pay almost a couple of grand just for the body. Incredible. Uh, this lens here, as you can see, anyone knows they're worth their salt, you'll see that that is the L series. So that's an expensive lens. So I think it's around about a grand, that lens. So incredible. And then of course you've got Osmo Actions. And you've got another Hero, I think that's Hero 7 Black, I think. This one we don't use much, but that's a 360 lens for it. Yeah, so all these, what I'm saying is, you've got to keep that on charge, you've got to keep that on charge, you've got to keep this on charge, you've got to keep that on charge. The controller for Skydy, you've got to keep on charge. The Seinhauser G, whatever they're called, G something, G100s, G3s, something like that. They've got to be kept on charge individually, but they're double A's, four of them in each. Got to be kept on charge, 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 charged. <laughs> charged. So this is, we're used to this. If you have a 9.1E, so C, E, E plus, C plus. The outer shells, we've got some outer shells coming in. We've got some already on speedyfeet.co.uk, so if yours are getting a bit smashed up, because this is one of the first wheels we ever stopped, but we had someone contact us who's used to sell this years ago and wants to clear out, and they contacted us about 12 months ago, something like that, and sort of went, nah, not really that interested, but they have still haven't managed to sell the shells off, so they come back, and we've taken a job lot on them, and probably collecting in a week or two. So to go and pick them up at some point, there's 110, 120 of them, shell sets. Yeah, I don't think there's any white in there, um, but there's, a, there's varying colours. So we're going to grab those and they'll be on the site. So if you want to refresh your really, really old vintage 9bot 1, then yeah, we can do that. Free sticker. Front slight strip for a Mini Pro. Free stickers. And this one is going to Italy. So someone in Italy has broken the front of their 9 bot Mini Pro. A Speedy Feet hoodie, good choice. Very, very good choice. Uh, bright wrap, which goes around your wrist, essentially. And then you've got one of those as well. Um, so they're under, I think, glow bands or something like that on our site. Um, and this is under merch. There we go, look, we've got some proper tunes going on. Awesome. I'm preparing now the live stream. We're going live in a couple of minutes. So this is all ready. Need to get this sorted out because it's not showing naught on Facebook and Instagram. It's all set up though. Ready to go in. Live diddly eye, two cameras, mobile lights, screen. Has me there. Hi, ma'am. The live chat's been set up. Yeah, show's finished. Or has it? Has it just started? The real show started now. So live's off and Mario's filming me and I'm filming him. It's and like a stare off. We're done with the live stream, but after the end, we make it unlisted so no one can see it. So you can only see it when we have it live. But afterwards, I will publish an edited version of the live show, uh, which should be with you on Thursday. Well, I'm just about to go. It is quarter past six and I've done this already once, but GoPros being GoPros, that's actually jammed on one second, as you might be able to see here. Jammed on one second, completely frozen. That's me talking to the camera, noticing that it's got stuck on one second. Non-responsive GoPro for you. That's what you got to battle with. So anyway, I'm off. Uh, during the live feed, the Lemetric, which is this thing here, uh, is not connecting to our Facebook page or Instagram, because Facebook keep changing their rules and regs and settings and stuff. So I'm actually trying to work out how to reset all that. Stop for now, um, and I'm off home. Um, so yeah, quite a busy day, quite a packed day. And obviously with the live feed on a Wednesday, it takes up quite a amount of time preparing for that and then actually doing it, sitting in front of the camera and doing it. So now I'm off home in the rain. Good morning, everybody. 
Right, drone in a bag. Need that. Found it in the end. Charge up the batteries. I'm hoping the weather is gonna hold so I can get on the RS a little bit more. We shall see. <sighs> Morning. Oh. I'm just quickly going to do an edit on the live show that we recorded yesterday uh, so today we should be able to get it uh, online on the YouTube channel so you can guys you can re-watch it and, uh, and see what was going on 3d printer is still going which is only a bad thing because it should have finished ages ago so that means something's gone wrong essentially it's been running for hours which it runs for hours anyway but not complete so what's happened it has run out of filament. So close. Man, oh man. What? Oh, what are we on? 93%. And there we go. All right. I just finished editing the live show and apologies for the uh, bad audio. I wasn't qu we weren't quite sure what the issue was, uh, but we'll try and, and get the audio sorted for next time. This is the most important job of the day, let's be honest. So with the 3D printer, it's now finished its uh, base, base part of that. But uh, as with all these things, they need maintaining uh, this one. Don't worry about the blue tape. Uh, so with this going back and forth all the time, what actually happens, it bends and it cracks and it damages the cable. So actually releasing that, uh, we found that it stops it. And this one was damaged earlier on because they actually, from manufacture, this is tucked down in that hole and then it gets trapped. And so it bends a lot, so it does a lot of that and it actually gets damaged. So what we've done is we've un-cable tied on the newer ones we've got to stop that happening. And it doesn't affect it anymore. This one was an early one, so it's done a lot of work. But, it's broken the sensor, so it got caught. That's why it's now got blue tape wrapped around it. Um, it grabbed it and ripped this out. Now this sensor is a little micro switch, which stops the basically the bed going back too far. Uh, sadly, of course, when it f it's fine for the whole print, for the whole 20 hours, but then of course when it finally finished, it's trying to cram going backwards, and there's nothing to shut it off. Um, so you have to quickly run out and turn it off. Um, so I just need to fix that and um, we've got loads of replacements so I pop those screws out take the micro switch off or probably just fix these pins back in just heard back from the metric regarding that saying zero it's these little things that take ages anyway they've asked me to open the app and tap login with Facebook surprise surprise there is no login with Facebook so I logged out thinking I'll log out and then I can log back in again by pressing login with Facebook and um, yeah I don't even know my original credentials, so I wish I had flipping logged out now. So I'm gonna send them some screenshots. It's a waste of 10 minutes just to get that counter display Instagram and Facebook correctly. When I was a student, I was commuting from home to the university and I decided to keep all my train tickets. And this is the end result. As you can see, I have my armor, cape, I am the train ticket man. Boom, so there's a the Skydio. And the batteries, as you can see, are slightly depleted. So we need to charge them up. So I'm gonna use the double charging block, which one you've got triple ones. So this is the uh, camera cupboard, which Mario keeps very, very tidy. So you've got lenses and all sorts there. So this is typically, that's like an AED. And then you've got some lenses here, 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 here. Some mics, some other vlogging goodies, bats for that. That's a double charger for the Sky Deer. So I'm gonna take that one. If I was a superhero, what kind of superpower strength I will have? Let me know in the comments below, guys. So one good thing is, like with the MacBooks, USB-C, GoPros, USB-C, Sky Deer 2, USB-C. And so I can just take this and plug it in to there and then I can charge them up. If I want to be a good superhero, I need to train harder to defeat my nemesis. 
which is the S18. Okay, one, uh, two, uh, three, uh, oh. okay, that's a new record, three push-ups, let's go! Hi guys, just a quick one regarding locking and unlocking your KS18L. Well, I've just finished uh, editing that short little video. There it is there. That's gonna go up, that'll be on Electric People, not on the YouTube channel. Um, file size is quite large, so we'll see. Hopefully I'll go up to Electric People. Um, if not, it'll be an unlisted video on um, our YouTube channel, and then post it up uh, as part of the service section on uh, electricpeople.org. I probably need to go back to editing the weekly vlog because I'm not sure Ian would be very happy with me just uh, messing about in my uh, train ticket suit. So um, I'll see you later guys. Tea time, that's what it is. Do, do, do. That's a nice little coaster I've got. It says Ian from the Scottish form of John. He is gifted with both intelligence and a good sense of humour. An adaptable and likeable man. Some people might disagree. These things, hate them. So with Lloyds, you have to use one of these every now and again to actually get into your bank account. Now, unless you're carrying this massive thing around with you, you can't access it. That is lame, in my opinion, to stop fraud. And it only trips us up, not the actual fraudsters. One thing I have been doing is tidying up the old office space. So yeah, a lot clearer, a lot more room. Excellent, I can actually access stuff now. Found, found some parts in here. So they run in a box, rods and screws for the Inmotion V10. So yeah, they can be booked in. Something else I also found was uh, this. So that's pretty neat, isn't it? Something else I also found was uh, this as well. So that's pretty neat, isn't it? Something else I found was uh, this as well, which is pretty neat, isn't it? Well, it is the end of the day. It's just gone five to seven. So I really need to pack up now and go. I have been answering emails. Uh, I did a shout out to say on Google, go and leave us a five star review if you would be so kind. I put that on YouTube, put it on electricpeople.org. People have been leaving reviews. Thank you very much for those who already have, but you're watching this vlog on a Monday and today is a Thursday. So yeah, go and do that if you like. Probably drop a little link in the bottom there if you want to go and click on it, but otherwise search Speedy Feet Limited and it should come up and you can leave a, a Google review for that. We've uh, been using a team integration software, so I've been changing all the settings around for that and making sure that's working seamlessly. We're in a 14 day trial, so don't wanna splash the cash on that unless it works for us. So we are trialing that out um, as I speak. So that's that's pretty neat. We've got software integration coming up that I've been talking about the last couple of weeks. We're still uh, doing that, still looking into it. We've got a lot of work to do on the SEO side of things. So there's a team coming on board possibly next week, which uh, I'll be in a meeting with them again, just to finalize some stuff and see how we get on with that. So we'll see how well that goes and report back. For the shop, got to have a separate bank account set up. So I've been liaising with the bank about that uh, because obviously it's already a pre-existing business. We've got it VAT registered, you have to have a bank account. Uh, I have been negotiating with the agent that works for the landlord who lives in Guernsey. So there's been a lot of back and forward with that. Uh, missed an Amazon delivery, which is flipping annoying. Uh, I've got the, the MacBook Air, the new one. Not the MacBook Pro, but the MacBook Air. It's, it's fine for answering emails and doing stuff like that, absolutely fine, but I do a lot of video editing as well. A lot of handling of media, so doing the pictures and doing videos and stuff. So I'm got we got the iMac over there, which is the top of the range one before the MacBook Pro. So we've got that one and it works really well. That's what Mario works off. And I've got another one of those coming. So that should have arrived today. Put notes everywhere and I got a missed delivery. We all know what that feels like. So I haven't got that come through. But when I do, I'll be able to set it up and I'll be able to edit videos a heck of a lot faster. This is great for basically everything and it will edit videos without crashing out. But when you've got 5K flowing through it or even 4K and you're overlaying tracks and stuff like that, it's just a bit of a, a bit of a grind. So I don't do it much from here and the screen's quite small. So 
yeah, I missed the 27 inch monitors. So yeah, 5K monitors on those. So really nice to edit from. Still haven't got the Lumetric sorted out. I'm liaising with them as well to try and sort that out. It's only a minor thing, so I haven't dedicated much time to that. Just done a bit of bits and bobs. And the Skydia batteries are all charged. You'll be glad to know. That's good to go for next time when we actually want to fly it and we've got good weather. Okay, I am off. There's always one more thing, isn't there? And so I've actually started to export out uh, the vlog for Monday for you guys. Uh, but I need to double check. Mario has been editing it up until uh, today. So Thursday evening. And so I'm going to check all that up. So because it's like 45 minutes already, something like that. Um, I want to get that under my belt. So I'm going to export it out to a micro SD and I'm going to take it home. And then when I got a spare a minute or well, spare 45 minutes I guess might do it in blocks of 10 uh, I've got to review all that footage make sure it's all right and then and then I can sign that part off up to Thursday with Mario because I'm not in the office tomorrow Mario is I can sign that off and then I just got to watch the Friday so I've only got to watch one day then at least I get that done that took a lot longer than expected it's now at 100% hasn't quite finished uh, it's now half past seven I'm just waiting for the 100% to tick by and then I'm off. So I've just added about another 20 odd minutes onto the uh, leaving time. A bit frustrating, but at least then I can watch it at home. Here I am just pulling into a charger in town. I get a charge for free. So I am gonna charge for free. So I'll be here for quite a few hours. I'm gonna leave it on and then come and collect it in around about two hours, something like that. So this morning, I woke up at four o'clock in the morning because someone had a, a curry last night and it did not sit well, you know, indigestion. Nothing else, nothing else to worry about, um, but just that. So I was up thinking, oh my goodness. So I came down and I've just been essentially working since then on loads of little intricate things that's involved in running the business really. Um, so yeah, that's pretty straightforward. There was well, one of the issues, I picked one of them, was on Electric People, published a second hand wheel for sale, put up six pictures, something like that, but only the first display, so it's a technical issue. That's gone off to support. I'm waiting for them to reply. It's supposed to have those Amazon deliveries come in. Will they come in? We all know because Mary's back at the office, so's Mike. So we shall see. I've also got to start thinking about uh, someone to run the shop, so a shop manager. So that needs looking into uh, this morning as well. Half priced chocolate croissant and a cup of tea. Perfect breakfast. Guess what I'm doing? Taking the RS. And then you have to get an app out. Charge confirmed. It's Friday and I'm going to the workshop because I need to tidy that place and build some shelves. It should be interesting and a bit of physical activity, so I'll get my uh, my exercise so I can burn the calories of the cross and I ate earlier. I've never seen this place so tidy. It is incredible. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> You're vlogging that here. <laughs> yeah. Amazing what you find when you open boxes up. Mike is just going through the graveyard of paintball guns and, and various bits and bobs so we can um, so he can sort that because I don't know anything about paintball so he will do that and then um, I will then populate the space with a shelf Okay, so we have a gap here and now I need to go and get the racking. The first casualty of the day, I was opening a box and I cut myself. But fortunately, we have plasters. So this is the, the bottom of, uh, of the shelves, uh, but it's about 91 centimeters or 36 inches. Good news, we probably have about a meter um, gap, so I can easily put a, a shelving unit here. So that's a great success. So this is the, the shelving unit and there's some instructions and now it's showtime.
I've made some good progress on building the shelf, but uh, they're designed to have five spaces and actually want to put six. So now I need to go and open a, another, another one of these boxes. And here you can see, so I have the bottom and then there'll be one, two, three, four, five, and on the top one, sixth. So uh, nearly done. I think it looks neat. Oh, I'm, I'm missing these um, panels on this side. But yeah, this will be complete and then we can put six new, well, six um, broken unicycles here to, that can be fixed. So many unicycles that needs to be repaired. It's actually quite handy having the light mode on the GoPro because I can use it as a torch just to go and find some stuff. I have two long pieces, two side pieces, one support, and obviously this, uh, the bottom bit. actually quite a good exercise putting everything together and here is the racking beautiful I'm actually quite happy with this so now on to the next task on the doctor's table we have a brand new Kingston S18 which does not power on and does not take a charge so now I'm trying to figure out what the issue with this machine is Now what I'll be doing is I will be unplugging the batteries and then checking if uh, if maybe one of the batteries is problematic and that and that's causing the issue and and see how that goes. I've checked the batteries, but still no luck. So I've sent um, my diagnostics to the um, to King Song in China, and probably next week we're gonna hear back from them and and see what we can do about this uh, S18. Uh. It's in the evening. Uh, I want to get the vlog working. There's some clips missing. And the Amazon delivery arrived. Yay! Finally. I can pull that logo down now, that sign saying, Oi, call this number. Oh. Oh, hello. A load of Flex Force tops have come in. Excellent, we've been out there for a while, so they'll be on the site. But a few people ask, when are you getting an XL back in? And I think medium or large we're out of? Well, the answer is now. It's very dark. <clears throat> MacBook Air. This is a bit of a change because I'm gonna fit the iMac on it. Just restarting this because this isn't working. So it says transfer information to this Mac. Looking for source, looking for other sources. <sighs> Doesn't work. There's a load of problems with it. Looking on the forums. I've done it before. I've done it for my old MacBook to so this MacBook Air and it worked really, really well. <sighs> well I've just set up as a new one. <laughs> also got 10 terabit drive. And some more of these, keep breaking them. And some ports to bring it around to the front of the uh, iMac. Well, we'll see you all next week. If you've got this far, well done. 
Uh, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't hit the bell notifications, do that. Uh, share the video, comment below if there's any content you want to see. We haven't received any questions at all in the comments since episode two, I don't think. So if you want questions answered within these episodes and get your name in here or whatever, then uh, ask away in the comments and I'll try and answer them on the next episode. Right, back to this.